Closed captioning for Lift Up Jesus is paid for by our friends at Galpin Ford of Los Angeles. The Lord's Prayer is one of the most well-known passages of Scripture found in the book of Matthew. In it, Jesus provides a model on how we ought to pray. Each line of the Lord's Prayer has meaning that goes beyond what many understand. Pastor Dudley believes the deeper levels of the Lord's Prayer are so important, he's created a complete teaching resource for this series, Teach Us How to Pray. This seven lesson DVD on the Lord's Prayer is available now for a gift of $50 or more to the Lift Up Jesus ministry. Order right now and we'll add Pastor Dudley's entire sermon series on Teach Us How to Pray to this offer. This DVD series includes two additional sermons not seen on television. The seven lessons and the complete sermon series on Teach Us How to Pray is available for your gift of $50 or more. Call us now or visit our website to take advantage of this limited time offer. Teach us how to pray. You will never read the Lord's Prayer the same way again. Hi, it's Pastor Dudley Rutherford of the Lift Up Jesus Television Ministry, and right now we are in a season of studying the Lord's Prayer. This prayer has been recited by more people in more languages around the world than any other prayer. And today you've picked the perfect day to join us because we're going to look at how Jesus taught us how to pray. And you're gonna learn some things that you've never understood before about this prayer. So grab your Bible, grab a pen, take some notes, maybe call a friend to join you. But today you are going to be blessed as we learn much more than we've ever learned before about the Lord's Prayer. I want you to take your Bibles and open them up to Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter six. And today we come to this simple, simple phrase, give us today our daily bread. And there is much more than meets the eye when you read that phrase. Now, this phrase is called the hinge. Everybody know what a hinge is? It's the hinge, it's the bridge between the top half of the Lord's Prayer and the bottom half. The top half has these deeply uh, profound, uh, large in scope spiritual truths. Uh, the fact that the creator God of the universe is our Abba, our Papa, our Father, that he wants to have an intimate relationship with you. That uh, we've looked at his name. The name of God is to be hallowed. It's to be made holy throughout the universe. And that we have prayed, part of the prayer is asking that God's kingdom would come that his will, as it is in heaven, would be done here on this earth. Now, right here in the middle is this request for a piece of bread, something that's physical, in the midst of all these spiritual truths. And the problem, and many of us are guilty of this, I want you to write this down. Most of the time when we pray, when you pray and I pray, we focus on the physical, and not the spiritual, which is most of the prayer. Usually we jump in and we go right starting asking God for physical request. How many of you have children? Raise your hand if you have children. How many of you do not have children? You have, well, I have some words of advice for you. <laughs> in case you ever have a child, and I've had three of them. When they're little and they first start to talk and they start to figure things out, the communication between your child basically boils down to one thought, and that is your child asking you continually, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I want, I want, I want, I want. Your I've experienced this. They come in and talk, they want something. And, it's, and, and even when and they're little, they just grab everything. That's, that's, that's in their DNA. Now, when they get a little older, they, they don't change. 
they keep asking, except they only want more expensive things. So when they start off, you know, they just want some change, some money, a few dollars, then they want 20, and then they want 100. They start off asking for a skateboard, and then they want a bicycle, and then one day they're gonna ask you for a car. They start off, they just want a birthday party, then they want a sweet 16 party, and the next thing you know, they're gonna ask you to pay for a wedding. <laughs> and one day, they become adults, and they move out of the house. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. The little mooches finally leave. <laughs> and even then they sometimes come back. <laughs> and they'll walk through the door because they need something. But there comes a point when they become mature. I've not experienced this yet <laughs> with my children. But there comes a point where they'll actually walk into your house not because they want to empty your bank account. There comes a point where every child wants to go see mom and dad simply to be in their presence. Okay, yeah, we rejoice when that happens. <laughs> this week, I'm gonna go see my mom and my dad. And when I walk into that house, I have absolutely nothing that I want them to give to me. I'm simply going there because I want to be in their presence. Now imagine just for a moment that you're God and you have seven billion children on this planet. And every time they come talk to you, their prayers consist of nothing but, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I want, I want, I want, I want. Seven billion people asking you for things. How would you feel if you were God? And what God wants, what he truly wants, is he simply wants you to enjoy and appreciate being in his presence. And that's what the first part of the Lord's Prayer is all about. Just God wanting you to enjoy His presence. And N.T. Wright, write this down, he warns that the danger with this prayer, give us today our daily bread, the danger with this prayer, this part of the prayer for bread is that we get there too soon. And I just want you to think about whenever you pray, is your prayer focused on you or is your prayer focused on God now before we get into the five points I have a surprise for you I have a guest uh, singer here a man by the name of Steve Amerson who is known as America's tenor he about once a month he flies to Washington DC and he has Bible studies for members of Congress, both Republicans and Democrats. He walks right into their office and he'll give them notes and cards with Bible verses and prayers and he'll see them in the hallway, doesn't matter, and just, he just prays with them. And they know that he doesn't want anything from them, he just wants to pray and so they'll all stop and they'll pray. And uh, I've asked him to come today and to sing, before we get into these five points, just to sing the Lord's Prayer. And I want you to think about when you hear this prayer in context, as it's sung, ask yourself, is this prayer about you? Or is this prayer about our Almighty Father? I want you to put your hands together and welcome Steve Amerson as he comes to sing for us today. Steve, get on up here, brother. Give 
give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is a kingdom and the power and the glory for that. Now, let's get back to our text today, amen? amen. And um, I want to I wanna get diggy with it. Everybody say, get diggy with it. <laughs> I want to dig, dig down into what's called the Lord's Prayer, this one line, give us today our daily bread. Number one in your notes, write this down. This, this line points to the reality that God in heaven is your provider. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. A big part of praying is realizing that God is the only one who can truly meet your needs. In fact, you can't even pray this prayer without knowing where your bread comes from. Everything you have comes from God. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But verse 18 says, Remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. The biggest mistake of your life is when you forget who it is that provides for you. You breathe His air. You eat His food. You wear His clothes. You manage God's resources. You live on God's planet. You are warmed by God's sun. You enjoy the beauty of God's oceans. Everything in life that is essential to you, everything in life that has value to you in this life, your health, your heart, your children, your family, your salvation, it all comes from God. Number two, write this down. This prayer, give us today our daily bread, reminds us that every day we should live with full dependence upon God. It's not that you're aware that he's your provider, it's that you are depending upon God to provide for you. Philip Keller asked the question, what is it that you depend upon? If it is anything outside the mighty hand of God, it is unfit to trust. The problem in, in America is that for most of us, and this is true, for most of us, this prayer makes no sense whatsoever because we're too well off. We think that this prayer should be spoken in Bangladesh, that this prayer should be spoken in Cambodia or in Sudan or in Ethiopia. Those are people who need bread just to survive. For us, it doesn't even make sense because we're too well off. William Willimon wrote that most of us perish from too much bread rather than too little bread. This week, I, uh, I was out in front, had a cell phone, and I did a little video. 
And I, I just want to show you this little video, okay? It's kind of silly, but I want you to look this video that I did yesterday or this week, Friday, I think it was. Here we go. So this weekend, Shepherd Church, Porter Ranch, right outside the church, we're packing up thousands of boxes of food, just basic staples of life that people need to have food to live, to exist, and we're sending it to the Philippines, to Manila. In Los Angeles, we have so much food. In fact, right across the street, Come with me for just a moment. We're gonna go across the street. We're gonna see how much food we have, all right? All right, let me walk in this store right here. Oh, what is that blower? Always messes up my hair coming in here. Look what I found here. Bread, 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 wheat bread, organic bread, whole, whole wheat bread. You know, Jesus said, give us today our daily bread. Which bread? We have so much bread, we don't know what to do with it all. Here's my point. In the United States of America, right across the street from our church, Ralph's Grocery Store, there is so much food, so much bread. It's not just bread. Do you realize all the other kinds of food that are in this grocery store? And this is just one grocery store in the entire United States of America? Do you understand the abundance of supply of food that God has blessed us with. So the reason I'm in this grocery store, especially here by the s'more section, is just to prove a point that we don't really have a dependence upon God because we don't need God. If we had a daily need where we were, we would not survive unless we had someone gave us a piece of bread, there might be a something within us that would cry out to God. But because we, we don't have a daily need, then it contributes to each and every one of us not having a need for God in our life. This prayer and the perspective of this prayer is so important. So I say to you, just be thankful that God has blessed our country and that we have what we have. And remember, give us today our daily bread. It should, it, it doesn't, but it should lead us to having a full dependence upon God. Now, where are those Pringles? I want to show you a Bible verse that many of you have never read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verses 7, 8, and 9, the, the writer of Proverbs writes these words. There are two things that I ask of you, O Lord, do not refuse me before I die. I want these two things while I'm alive on this earth. Number one in verse 8, keep falsehood and lies from me. And secondly, give me Neither in this life give me neither poverty nor riches, but only give me my, what? My daily bread. Why? Here's why. Verse 9, otherwise, here's why I don't want to be rich and why I don't want to be poor. I may have too much, and if I have too much, there's a chance I will disown you. I, I, I will say, who is the Lord? In other words, I won't need the Lord if I have too much. And I don't want to have, be poor because if I, if I become poor, I might steal. And then I will dishonor the name of my God. So he said, don't make me rich, don't make me poor. Just give me today my what? My daily bread. David Timms asked a great question. If God, is your God a pleasant acquaintance? Or is God the very breath of your daily existence? I don't even know how, honestly, how we can pray this prayer. I, I don't know how people living in America can pray, even pray this prayer. Especially when we're solely focused on building retirement accounts and building our portfolios and our nest eggs and looking after our mutual funds and our equity. But I do know this, that God desires for you to live every day on this earth in a full dependence upon Him and only Him. I know that's true. Number three, write this down. We are to pray, we are to pray for a daily provision, not for a year's supply. 
This does not say, give us today a year's supply. Jesus could have said that, but no, he said, when you pray, everybody wake up, when you pray, you ask your heavenly Father to provide for you to meet your needs just for today. The truth is, we would rather, ha we would rather have a year's supply. Because if we had a year's supply, I wouldn't have any stress in my life. It would take all the, e it would, I wouldn't have to worry, I wouldn't have all the tension in my life if I had a year's supply. I mean, who wants, who wants to be a day laborer? Does anybody want to be a day laborer where you just sit on a street corner and hope and pray that someone hires you for one day so you can do a few chores just so you can have enough food just to buy a little bit of bread for you and your family? Does anybody want that job? I'd like to have a buffer, like some extra, so I don't have to worry about things in life. That makes good sense, right? You see, there's always a tug of war, and it's a spiritual tug of war between you doing enough to provide for yourself and you trusting in God to provide for you and knowing that he will do so. The children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years. And they're out in the desert when, if you're, I couldn't live one day in the desert. They were out there for 40 years. And the Bible says in Exodus chapter 16, sometime you need to read that chapter, it's a, it's a long chapter, Exodus 16, it talks about how every single day for 40 years that God brought bread, manna, from heaven. And it just fell on the ground. And God, the instructions were very clear. When you go out and pick up the bread, pick up enough just for one day. Don't pick, it up, don't pick up enough for two days. Don't pick up enough for a week or a month. Don't hoard the bread. When you go out there, just get enough just for today. Why would he ask them just to pick up enough for one day? Why, why did he want them that? Because he wanted them every day of their life, not for one year, two years, three years, but for 40 years. He wanted them to know that every single day that he was going to provide, and he wanted them to learn how to trust in him instead of their ability to go out and acquire as much as they could. This is a most powerful line. Give us today, just today. You're saying, God, I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. I'm going to live just for today with my eyes on you, focused on you, my faith in you, trusting in you to provide for this day, and tomorrow will be another day that I'll get up and I'll start all over again trusting in you to provide. I'm not going to waste my day today worrying about anything else because I know that I'm living today under God's care and under God's provision. Everybody say, get diggy with it. What chapter are you in? Matthew chapter what? It's in this context. It's in this context. If you turn over to verse 25, that Jesus says these words, therefore, everybody say therefore, I tell you, do not worry about life, what you will eat or drink, or about what your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? The Bible says in the next verse, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. The birds don't care about tomorrow, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than birds? I hope so. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? In verse 28, why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies or the flowers of the field grow? They don't labor or toil. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. And if that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow's throne of the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So verse 33, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these other things will be given to you as well. And the last verse, verse 34, says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen.
God will provide for you today. So point number four, these all kind of add on to each other. This prayer is a prayer that teaches contentment. It teaches you how to be content with what God has given to you. There are times where I am fearful that the things that I own, that I think I own, that they actually own me. Money and material possessions, if not used to honor God, will steal your best time and will steal your best energies. The Lord's Prayer is one of the most well-known passages of Scripture found in the book of Matthew. In it, Jesus provides a model on how we ought to pray. Each line of the Lord's Prayer has meaning that goes beyond what many understand. Pastor Dudley believes the deeper levels of the Lord's Prayer are so important, he's created a complete teaching resource for this series, Teach Us How to Pray. This seven lesson DVD on the Lord's Prayer is available now for a gift of $50 or more to the Lift Up Jesus ministry. Order right now and we'll add Pastor Dudley's entire sermon series on Teach Us How to Pray to this offer. This DVD series includes two additional sermons not seen on television. The seven lessons and the complete sermon series on Teach Us How to Pray is available for your gift of $50 or more. Call us now or visit our website to take advantage of this limited time offer. Teach Us How to Pray. You will never read the Lord's Prayer the same way again. You know, Pastor Dudley enjoys hearing from everyone watching him through this ministry. Your emails, phone calls, and social media contacts are very important to him. We want you to know you can also write to Pastor Dudley at our mailing address, Lift Up Jesus Ministry, 19700 Rinaldi Street, Port Ranch, California, 91326. Again, that's Lift Up Jesus Ministry, 19700 Rinaldi Street, Port Ranch, California, 91326. Your financial support, large or small, is greatly appreciated. You can be assured your gifts to this ministry go directly to help touch and change the lives of many who are hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ for the very first time. Someone just like you helped us to be here on this station you're watching right now. Your partnership gift can help us reach into more cities and to new viewers across America in the very same way. So if Lift Up Jesus has been a blessing to you, Please take just a moment to write, call, or visit our website and click the Give button today. Join us every week for another life-changing message from Pastor Dudley. You can visit us anytime on our website and discover the many resources available there to help you with your daily Christian walk. And while you're there, please consider partnering with us to help support this ministry. Pastor Dudley has a burden to reach the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we can only do that with your financial help. You can also connect daily with Pastor Dudley through many forms of social media. We thank you for being a part of this ministry and invite you to join us again next week at the same time. Remember, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. Jesus.